Good morning. More like God morning, everyone. I think it's after 12. But I wanted to come on here, to be honest. I can't shake the table. <laughs> I wanted to come on here, to be honest. New background. New scenery. I haven't filmed outside in a long time. And it's chiller, guys. It's chiller. And so, let's button up. I already have a long sleeve shirt on. And I got my cute, my cute, um, jacquette from the Cascare. They did not sponsor us. But, okay. On a serious level of focusness. I kind of just wanted to come on here to just kind of express a little bit of how I've been feeling the last couple of days, weeks and honestly months. Now part of my channel here was to express to you all the truths that I've been finding. Um, if it wasn't clear, I don't know if I've ever told this in any other videos. Now I did start off one of my videos with a testimony. I think that was like one of my first videos on here and I need to redo it because I do want to give a little bit of my experience with the Lord. I'll get about give it that to you guys. But one of the things that I've been feeling gravely uh, just has been disappointment. And I, a part of like this channel is me being honest and transparent with you all. And a part of what I'm desiring from the Lord right now is honesty and transparency as well. I've Before I started to get to become in the before I guess I could say before I became in the position to teach people the things that the Lord has taught me I was being taught by other people that the Lord was using I was being taught by ministers by prophets by evangelists apostles pastors teachers my mom my brothers and that's where I was getting a lot of my information from Bible studies you know, things like this. And I was learning a lot from people. And as I was learning, I took what I was getting. You know, there was no question about a lot of the things because I didn't know. But as I started to learn about things through my personal Bible studies with the Lord, through personal revelation, and I do believe that the Lord speaks to me. But sometimes I'm truly not sure. And sometimes I'm like, Lord, is that you? Uh... Are you talking to me? Uh, is that what you said? But then sometimes it's like clearly obvious because it's like, I'm not that smart. <laughs> it's like, you did not think of this. <laughs> You're not that smart. Um, and so that's how I know. And so a lot of the things that I've been teaching you guys on this channel, Truth and Z, has been what I call Rhema insights or prophetic insights. Or just rhema understanding, rhema words from the Lord. Like it's been, sometimes the Lord would just, I would read something and sometimes I don't understand it. Like really my journey through understanding the word of God and desiring to read it has been so interesting because I used to read the Bible and not understand at all. I understand the thing I was reading. It's so interesting. But truthfully, especially because I started reading the KJV, that was the Bible that we used to my family. That was like my first actually the first bible i got was like god's word translation but i didn't even read my bible at the time and it was one of those i got it when i was a preteen, and it was one of those like draw your own cover bibles and i drew my own cover and it was looking cute at the time personally it looks ugly today but at the time i thought it was super cute and then my brother drew on it and i was just like yeah forget it i'm not even reading that bible sadly that's that was my perspective i didn't read that bible after that <laughs> Um, but like after starting to read the KJV, I started to understand it. I started to become familiar with the language and how it was going and what it was saying. And, and just like in general, I just started to begin to understand. The Lord started to give me understanding of the word. And so I was just like, wow, okay, okay I'm getting it. And now like what I'm, what I'm experiencing as I'm reading the Bible is the Lord, it's almost like I'm getting a, a, a I guess an unction to go look up words, an unction to like connect this scripture to that scripture or connect this scripture to something like in modern times you know and i'm not this intelligent you know like i can plan things and i'm i do really well in school i could be doing better i say i do well in school and i could be doing much better 
my goal is to get A's, but I know I'm not that intelligent. I don't have the greatest memory. So I know that these things have to be the Lord. And this is kind of like my encouragement to you guys. If you're wondering whether or not the Lord is speaking to you, sometimes it's just as simple as I'm not that smart. <laughs> you know, I like I don't have those capabilities. <laughs> and so listen back. This is not a party about you. You know, guys, I got my um my Japanese sky and pancake here. We multitasking. <laughs> this bus okay that's one other thing just like those experiences and so then I grew in the Lord and I grew in knowledge and I grew in understanding and eventually I was able to stop well I feel like the Lord started to call me to stop listening to some people one of the things that the Lord told me I think like last year to my family was like why are you listening to people who don't even understand the principles and, and instructions and laws that i've and values that i've given you it's like why are you watching them sometimes we like watching people because it, it's encouraging to hear the things that god sometimes is revealing to them because sometimes the lord ain't even talking to them sometimes the lord's not talking to these people but sometimes for us it's like encouraging to listen to them to, to continue to you know tune in Whatever it is we may be thinking it is. But one of the things that the Lord has showed me. I was like, stop listening to those people. If they are not even at the level that you're on. Like, why are you even? Why are you even over there? Why are you over there? And so I had to stop listening to a lot of people. Either because they weren't, like the Lord said. They weren't doing the things that he said. And one of the key big things is keeping the commandments. A lot of preachers, teachers, prophets, apostles, ministers, evangelists don't keep the Ten Commandments, let alone the plus of all the other commandments the Lord gave us in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so the Lord is like, why are you listening to those people? You're not there. You're above them. Because what the Lord has revealed to my family is that the commandments are the kindergarten level. Like if we're going to compare it to any type of levels, it would be like compared to the academics, it would be kindergarten. It's like daycare. It's like you learn your ABCs and you can't really do much of anything else if you don't learn your ABCs and your one, two, threes. If you're illiterate, you're, you can't really get through school. And so that's what's happening. A lot of people are just making it, barely. But they're not meditating on their word day and night. Because even when you think about it for a person who did not learn their ABCs, but they learned the English language. Because people can um, grow up and be illiterate, but they still can communicate with people. They can speak and articulate things, but they cannot read and write. And it's interesting that, that the Lord just kind of breaking it down my mind. Because as I was asking God for the gift of tongues... The specific things that I was asking for him for was to read, write, speak, articulate, and communicate in the language that I'm asking. There's speak, read, write, articulate, and communicate. That's what it was. And all those things. To be able to articulate, I feel like, is break down your point. And oftentimes, people who are not literate can't do that. They don't understand the word. They don't understand the definition of the words they're speaking. And they just don't know how to relay the message to people because they, they you can't even you can't even really help the people understand in the English language because they didn't really study it. And so that's what a lot of these people are. They're just talking the things that they've heard. You know, like they grew up in these environments, but they've never sat down and learned their ABCs or one, two, threes. And so the God's God, the God, God is like, stop listening to those people. So I did. And this journey has been a long journey of me just understanding the Lord and really trying to know his ways, trying to understand his thoughts, trying to understand God's plan and his vision for this world, and in general, just understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. In the last few weeks, to the point of this video, the last few weeks and really months, I've just been feeling like, just so down. Like I've been feeling just so angry and frustrated about life in general. <sighs> And I feel like the devil has been trying to use my emotions to make me feel jealous of people. And I've never been the type of person to look at others and say, 
oh yeah, that person over there has something I want. Like, I don't want nothing nobody has. I don't want anything that anybody has. And even when I think about it before, like before I got serious in my relationship with the Lord, I was like, I don't even want wealth. Like I grew up semi poor, semi could be better, could be better, right? I don't know what other word to call it. It was like, I never really wanted anything. Like I didn't want anything other than truthfully my needs to be met. I like that's all I desired for the basics. You know, I like going out to eat. I like Chinese food. So I was like, you know, I mean, I could go to China and get Chinese once or twice a week. And I never wanted anything greater. But the, what the Lord has done the past few years, I would say the past four to five years of my family's life, was introduce us into a life that we never even expected. That we didn't want. We didn't desire it. And it started off with us, well, at least for myself, with me desiring the Lord. And then the Lord just kind of blew our minds with all these things that he wanted us to have. And I was just like, wow, God. Like, I didn't know that these things were things you wanted. And even as I was reading the Bible, when I was in these struggling times, where we didn't have money for food, we had money for clothing, and I was wearing the same pair of sneakers like for three or four years, I didn't know that the Lord said he would supply all of our needs with none lacking. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the Lord had promises. I didn't know. Like even this past four or five years, the Lord has literally introduced us to his word. It was like a reintroduction of him and his promises and everything, everything in general. It really was like a reintroduction to everything. And even as I'm thinking about this right now, <clears throat> most people compare these like trying experiences after the Lord has like introduced the promise to you and he's like informed you that there's something coming informing me that what he has planned for you as the wilderness experience and the Lord has told my family that we were in the wilderness experience that we had gone to our promised land and like the spies uh Jacob and Caleb went out and they kind of spied out the land Joshua sorry Joshua and Caleb went and spied out the promised land and then they left and went back to the wilderness and then there was an appointed time for them to go and conquer the, the promised land and just now, as I'm saying that, I feel like the Lord was really just telling me that. So I'm thinking about the comparison, the fact that they were in the wilderness for 40 years and how my family has really been in this wilderness, reaching almost probably four years exactly, but maybe a little over. I don't know, because uh, really God called us this into this experience around the pandemic. Like, really? Yeah, like around the pandemic like 2020 but the lord pretty much told us that he has something greater for us he told us the promise i'm gonna call it the promise he told us what the promise was and he, he started to feed it to us because he didn't give us everything at the same time but he definitely started to feed it to us <laughs> my mom's watching me <laughs> i see her looking at me <laughs> so i know i don't like when people are around and recording videos because it just makes me feel awkward watch it afterwards okay back to the main video Okay, so I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, what it is. Oh yeah, so it was just like that. So he revealed to us, and then after he revealed to us, all hell broke loose. <laughs> Life ain't never been this hard, y'all. <laughs> Life ain't never been this hard. Life ain't never been this strugglesome troublesome trialsome life ain't never been this hard and, and so we were just in our wilderness experiences and so we did go to the promised land then we had to leave and the Lord said we're back in wilderness and I just made the correlation in my mind because the Lord also specifically told us rapid acceleration was happening right now rapid acceleration I thought about the fact that they're in the wilderness that the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years and one of the things I would say is the Lord has told us to use types and anti-types. Like, who in the Bible is going through something we're going through? And he has pointed out a couple of stories for us so that we can say, okay, you know, this Bible character and these people were going through these things at this time. I can learn from what they're going through. You know, that kind of thing. And so we've done that. And the Exodus has truly been such a correlating story to us. Like, it has been, like, really a type of our story. Like, we are the anti-type of, of the Exodus right now. And I'm sure many of you are, because the Lord has really been calling people out of their 
comfortable positions where they probably grew up been their whole life. And the Lord's like, up and out. Gotta go. You gotta go. And sir. And so one of the things that I may, just made the correlate, or the Lord has just brought the correlation of, they were in the world just for 40 years. And we are almost at four years of what feels like our wilderness experience. Really. Really. An interesting thing, um, we were reading through Joshua and just kind of seeing what the Israelites were experiencing. And a part of what they were experiencing, the Lord said specifically that he had caused them to go through the wilderness for 40 years and wander around so that he can remove all of those who were not truly committed to him. And to understand this, you have to go back to the book of Exodus and see what exactly was happening. And the Lord talked about how a great multitude of people had gone out of Egypt with the Israelites. There were Israelites who did not want to be in covenant with the Lord that he dropped off. Some of them were like Achan. Uh, another one was like Korah. Uh, these people who dis intentionally disobeyed the Lord, pretty much saying that they don't care about him and that they, they, they just want to die. You know, some people are just going because it's a movement. Some people are just going because the crowd is going. You know, there's a joke in the black community that if we see a black person running, we're all running because we don't know what happened, but we know if that black brother is getting it stepping, we too is getting it stepping. <laughs> and that's so funny. Like, I, I've seen skits where they're just like, somebody just starts running and it's like, yo, what's going on? You don't even want to find out. Hey, we're just running. <laughs> and sometimes that's what it was like for the Exodus, that there was people who were like, why is everybody just packing and leaving? And they went, and they went. And so the Lord said he was uh, scraping them off. He was removing those people so that in the end, there was just a remnant. Just a remnant who was faithful, just a remnant who loved him and served him. And as we see with the cycles of the Israelites in the Bible is that they always, I'm saying a, a large group of them just always turned away. And one of the things that the Lord actually revealed to me, which I'll do another video about, I'm gonna do another video about that. Um, yeah. Because I think it was it was a good revelation that the Lord gave me about regarding the these experiences. But anyways, in general, I just feel like I wanted to be honest with you guys because I know I put out a video not too long ago, just kind of encouraging along. And I'm sorry, I really can't do too much encouragement right now. I mean, what I thought about earlier is that I don't want encouragement. I just want God to do, and I know that a lot of us are feeling the same way. Like we don't want another prophetic message that says it's coming soon or it's happening now. Or, and I, I know a lot of them are actually the Lord telling his people this because the Lord wants us to be encouraged in this time. And like um, Paul talks about, you know, enduring hardships like a good soldier. And I'm just like, Lord, dismiss me. Because I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> and I know a lot of us are ready to just like, we're ready to be done. We are. <sighs> we're ready to be done. And... Uh, I honestly was just feeling about the prophetic message is just like I don't want to hear this anymore like I'm so tired of hearing the same things over and over again like I'm tired of the words I'm tired of the encouragement I'm tired of saying I'm tired of hearing that it's right now it's tomorrow in three days by the end of this month by the end of the week and I'm like I'm so exhausted like spiritually and mentally exhausted from hearing these things and I just want the Lord to do and I know that many of us are feeling the same way you know, the Lord even said yesterday that, you know, oftentimes we think that we're the only ones going through these things, but I know that we're not. Now, that's not even why I actually wanted to come out here and do this video. I was going to do what I call, um, excuse me, bugs. No, there's no place of review here. Usually I do these videos called personal video diaries, which is me just recording myself, talking to myself and talking to the Lord. And I was really just going to come out here and just talk to the Lord about how I'm just so sad and disappointed with the things that we're going through right now. But then this turned into an actual YouTube video because I realized like, wow, look at the scenery. Scope the scenery out, y'all, scope it. And so I'm here doing a Truth of Z video. And while I don't feel like I want encouragement, I know that the Lord knows a lot of people do. And with those true prophecies are a lot of false ones. And what the Lord calls parroting, meaning that they just repeat what the actual true prophets are saying, or they just repeat what anybody's saying. <laughs> like, I mean, wh why would they limit? You know, they're not limiting. 
the false prophets are often saying something similar to what the, the Lord is saying because they're trying to blend in and make it seem like they're true prophets. But it's just like, they're not. And so... Um, I don't know, I just feel like one of the things I've been asking the Lord for recently is just honesty and transparency. Like I said in the beginning, I want honesty and transparency. Because I'm sure. 18-year-old Zipporah would have said definitely not if the Lord had detailed all the things that we have, would have gone through. Even as I was in the shower the other day, I was thinking like, you know, in the end, I'd do it again. It was a song I was singing. It was like, and in the end, I'll do it again. And um, I was like, hold on, you're like, you're saying that. I'm just like, <laughs> would you? <laughs> like, <laughs> probably not. <sighs> I would say if it was the Lord asking me, do you want to do it again? And I'm saying, no. But if the Lord said he wanted me to do it again, and I had the knowledge that I had, at the end of it that it was gonna be to a conclusion which is like cheating i would do it again i would do it again i mean because the lord asked me to but if it was my choice and the lord was saying support what do you want i'd say no <laughs> let's it keep it going but do you know it actually would be an interesting experience to go back with the knowledge that i have now and start over it would be that would be a very interesting experience um anyways guys I don't want this video to be too long. We're, all, we're 20 minutes in. Probably go 25 or 30. Who knows? But I just kind of want to... Um, I didn't know really what the purpose of this video was. Other than to just share how I'm feeling. And honestly... I just feel like a lot of things the Lord has been telling us... Has not been happening. And I don't know. It's like, it's like I'm either I'm not seeing it happen... Or the Lord has done something else. But then I always go back to the scripture where I'm like... The Lord's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Because truthfully, I don't understand, which has led me to the prayer of honesty and transparency. Because, I don't know, I feel like the relationship that I have with the Lord and the one that I desire is not to be fake. You know, I'm not a Christian or a follower of Christ because I grew up in the faith. You know, truthfully, growing up, I had a decision to become a Muslim or a Christian. That was the lifestyle that we had. I had an option, you know. The first couple of years of my life was to learn how to be a Christian and the latter was supposed to learn how to be a Muslim. But by the time, you know, I encountered Islam, I was just like, what the heck is this? I'm gone. <laughs> I had no interest. And so I chose God at first when I was a child because it was what my mother was teaching us. You know, it was what we were raised to believe. I was going to church. We were going to church on Sunday and then we were going to church on Saturday. And then we were keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath holy. And... You know, it wasn't that deep. I used to fall asleep every Sabbath service. I would go to sleep in Sunday church, and I would go to sleep in Sabbath church. Like, I was just always sleeping in church. Specifically, when the sermon started. Now, it could have been a demon spirit that was just kind of rocking me to sleep, but I just didn't... I was interested. I didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. I don't even remember ever praying for anything truthfully as a little child. That's why even one of the things I, I just... As I mentioned before, I didn't know the Lord was supposed to supply our needs. Like, when we were going through hardships, I didn't think to pray and ask God to help us. It sounds weird. But I did not learn that. I did not learn that, you know, that if you need something, ask the Lord. Like, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't in my mind. Especially not in education. Especially not in, like, any aspect of my life other than in church. And so, when I really started to have a relationship with the Lord, I, it was really because I, at that point, like, I had been exposed to God. And... I truly felt that the Bible was true and that Yeshua is Lord. Like, this, these, the things I'm reading in the Bible is real. It's accurate. This is the truth. And then my relationship with God started to deepen. And I chose the Lord, truthfully. I think when I was like 16 or 17, when I was homeschooled, when I was away from all the influence of the out external people, ex external people. I, I truthfully decided to follow the Lord. I started reading my Bible and I started taking God seriously and listening to sermons and, and trying to be a, a woman of God. I, when I, I Actually, I learned about a Proverbs 31 woman like really early on, like when I was maybe in seventh or eighth grade. Move bugs. And I 
you know, just started learning a lot of the biblical concepts and just deepening my personal relationship with the Lord. Worship, Bible study, reading the Word, praying. You know, I was on that new version Bible app with the streaks. <laughs> I got my streak going, you know, while everybody else in high school was doing the Snapchat streaks, which I couldn't even keep up with that because why am I Snapchatting someone every single day? Couldn't. But my Bible streak was up. My Bible streak was up. I think I got like 300 days and then I missed one day and I was just like, let me watch an ad to get my point back. <laughs> but they don't do that in the Bible app. <laughs> they do that in like games and things, but... You know, I like I chose the Lord because I believed that he was true and I believed that his word was true. And so my expectation coming into this covenant with the Lord was that that was so. I had no doubt in the Lord. I had full, complete faith and trust and belief that he was going to do like the Lord said when he was giving us a house tomorrow. We were getting a house tomorrow. No doubt. I'm in the house. I'm planning for the house. I'm on JCPenney, TJ Maxx, Macy's. I'm shopping for beds. I'm shopping for jewelry. Not jewelry, because what? I don't even do jewelry. Shopping for house goods, you know, pots and pans and dishes. I love me some tea cut sets, you know, you know, some tea sets. You know, I'm looking and I'm searching for all the things that would equip me to be in the space that the Lord wanted me to be. And so then when tomorrow came and there was no house, I thought, what's going on, Lord? And the first time I was like, all right, whatever. It's probably delayed. Then I started learning about from, from the prophets and teachers that I was listening to at the time about delays. And that the prophetic word is delayed. It's delayed. And so I was like, okay, it's delayed. But then I'm like, why is it delayed? And then that led to pretty much a slew of, oh, it's not now. Of, oh, you're not ready. Of, oh, the Lord's holding it back for this. Of, oh, the Lord's waiting for this. And the chess pieces are being moved. And by the end of the month, and then three days in. And I just got so drained from hearing all these things. It's like the update started to drain me. If it was an update, it was starting to drain me. Because I was just thinking like, Lord, like you're God. And you know, even I have this perspective, I don't know if there's any other believers out there who have this perspective, I don't care about nobody else. And what I mean by that is I want all souls to be saved in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, like the Lord said. Because the Lord said to love others as he has loved us, which is that he wants us to be saved. But I don't care about nobody, what nobody else is doing, and it shan't better not have no input in what I'm doing. Better not. Especially my relationship with the Lord. Like, I better not hear from no Prince of Persia. And if you guys understand what, who the Prince of Persia is, the Prince of Persia is in the story of Daniel. When Daniel had fasted, Daniel chapter, it's a book in Daniel, y'all. I think it's around the book of Daniel chapter 9, where Daniel was fasting for an answer. I don't remember the specific thing, but he decided to fast for an answer. And I think he ultimately, that was a 21-day fast, where he ultimately ended up fasting for 21 days because the angel came to him on the 21st day and told him, like, as soon as you prayed your prayer, the Lord actually answered your prayer. But I was fighting with the Prince of Persia and I had to call backup from the Archangel Michael so that he could come help me so I can deliver the message to you. And it took me 21 days. I don't have time for that. Y'all, I don't have time for that. See, because the Lord said all things are possible, my mind is really at that. All things are literally possible like if the Lord says it's happening I better not hear about no Prince of Persia because God's Word is the ultimate it's ultimate if the, if the Lord released it at 11 o'clock I better receive it at 11 o'clock because there's no data surface there's no heaven to uh, earth level transmission errors it's it, 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 immediate and that very same hour that's what I believe I better not hear from no Prince of Persia I better not. I better hear about nobody else. That's why I said the devil don't got nothing to do with me. We're not here. Because I truthfully don't even believe, you know, while it's it's it, it, it's easy because it's what a lot of us are experiencing to focus on the devil and the kingdom of darkness, but I don't got nothing to do with them. In the beginning, it was about me and the Lord. In the Garden of Eden, it was Adam and God. And then it was Adam, Eve, and God. Until the devil came in and slid the snake, which in my opinion, he shouldn't have been allowed to be in there. But, that's my side note. But because they decided to invite the devil into their personal relationship with the Lord, chaos came. But for me, I don't got nothing to do with none of them over there. 
that's them. My relationship and my life is about me and God. It's between me and God. I want no other people interfering. To explain this to my family, I use the example of a husband and a wife. If a husband and a wife would allow some random lady to come and break up their relationship to deter something happening, I use this example that if the husband said that on Friday is date night, that he would allow his coworker to, to persuade him to stop doing Friday date nights. And he listened. That's not a man. That's a punk. But that's how I feel about my relationship with God. It's like God compares us, our relationship to him, to that of marriage. So it's like, if I love the Lord and the Lord loves me, how is this evil naysayer from over there talking to me? First of all, because the Lord said he would protect us. But then second of all, because like, who is caring about you? Go back. Get thee hence. Didn't the Lord already tell you to get thee hence? You know, you guys, I'm end of you. Anyways, that was it. My pancake is cold. No, but on my pancake. That was all I had, y'all. I thought something came out. <laughs> the one piece of advice I do have is to be sure that you are actually communicating with the Lord. One of the things that the Lord told us would happen later on in the world is that there would be personal prophets. People wouldn't have access to the internet and it's important to know who's actually speaking to the Lord because especially if the Lord's speaking to you that you eventually might be the one who's leading a group of people into safety. And one of the things that I know it's gonna really help people is if the Lord is telling you because it's so easy to get caught up and go on YouTube and go on TikTok and go on Facebook and go on Instagram and hear these prophetic words and think everything applies to you and you think oh because it popped up on my YouTube feed that it is God like they, these people love to say that if you're seeing this it's God no, it's not. It's the YouTube algorithm. It is programmed to do that. You use the hashtag prophecy. And because I watched two prophetic videos, you popped up. It is not because... God is not always in the algorithm. Look at that. The Lord is not always in the algorithm. He's not always present where the influence are present. He is not. And so, all in all, it's important for us to have a personal relationship with the Lord. A personal one. And the encouragement that I can have for you is to clearly dictate to the Lord what you're expecting from Him. Clearly dictate it. Write it down if you need to. I feel like something is not official unless I write it down or I record it. So if you got to record a video or record audio of you telling the Lord what you're expecting from him or you telling God, writing down him and writing down what you what, what you're saying, like this covenant relationship is supposed to be. Because what I what I think a lot of people also don't understand is that the relationship between us and God is, as the Bible describes, is a covenant, which is like a contract. And both parties have to input something for the contract to be fulfilled. For example. If someone's building a home, they go and have a contract with a construction company to build the home. The construction company is requiring that you get insurance and that you pay them to build the home. And you're expecting the, the construction company to buy the materials and to build your home. It's the same kind of thing with God. We're expecting God is expecting us to keep his commandments, judgments, statutes, and ordinances. And then we're expecting as a result of that to bless us. And blessing us is general. That we will provide all of our needs, give us life and life more abundantly, that we will be saved from hell, that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and used for God's glory, healed, delivered, saved, set free, all those things. All the things that the Bible says. And sometimes we forget 
that that's what it is. Like, we're not just here and saying, Lord, I trust you and I believe you and thank you, God, but we're living in hell because that's not what the Lord said. The Lord says in his Bible, in the Bible, in his word, that he has destined for his children prosperity and none lacking. And so that's what we should expect. And oftentimes, God, our expectations are almost equivalent to what we're believing. And sometimes we only believe God for what we can think about, for what we think is achievable. Like we ask God that we get a raise. That's not a miracle. If you, if you get a raise at your job, it's like almost every year, most people get a raise. We honestly, the thing that the Lord has taught me is to act like the crazy, the wild, the crazy, the wild, the part the Red Sea type crazy. The things that I, we don't see, the things that we're not seeing, that's a miracle. The things that are impossible with man, but all possible with God is the miracle. Anybody can give you a raise. I can give you a dollar every day on top of your hours, and now you have a raise. We gotta get real. We gotta get real. We gotta get fair. What's creaking? Anyways, guys, I just encourage you to continue in your relationship with the Lord. It is hard. It is. It's going to be. <laughs> and I am saying that according to the word of God, it gets better. Even my prayer has been like, Lord, I have had enough trials and tribulation. We good till you come. Mm -hmm. We don't need no more. Till you come. Bueno, like we're all the way good. We don't need no more trials. <laughs> None till you come. And so, uh, continue to believe the Lord, guys. It's difficult. What we're all going through right now is hard. But I truly believe that God is a God who keeps his word. And that we'll be experiencing it all very soon. Be encouraged. And as they say in Korean, Haiting, which it's like a loner word from fighting it's like keep going you can do this let's go you can do it hi team hi team guys hi team so let's just trust the lord in that that um one of the things that actually we were saying is we are faithing and god is fighting hi team hi team for god and faith being for us because what God is requiring from a lot of us right now is not that we go out and fight any battles. Actually, he's told a lot of us to mm, our lips when we wanted to, right? So he's told us to be quiet. Excuse me, sir. Like, I didn't invite you in this video. Sir. So if we want to just bust somebody in. Sometimes we want to retaliate. Retaliate. Retaliate? Oh my gosh. Why can't I pronounce that word? Sometimes we want to retaliate. Retaliate. <laughs> Sometimes we want to retaliate and not be quiet. Especially after we've come to a point where like, I was quiet my whole life. Now is my time to shine. And the Lord's like, no, go sit down, smile, don't even say anything. And sometimes the Lord tells us to continue the conversation and be nice. <sighs> and it's hard for some of us. Now I didn't grow up fighting. So it's kind of easy for me to get walked on and just kind of take whatever. But uh, lately, I've been really thinking of putting people in check, at least with just my mouth. Who do you think you're talking to? And I got my voice too. Who do you think you're talking to? Oh my gosh. How unprofessional. Oh no. Oh no. Absolutely not. Not with me, ma'am. I'm sorry. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Must be your dog. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm done. God be with you guys till we meet again. And I pray that the Lord would encourage you. Like, the Lord is giving you encouragement. Oh, I'm not. Because he knows we need encouragement. Some of us are just down and tired and beat and exhausted and just, boy, I want it over. I want it to end. Pray that the Lord will give you the encouragement that he knows that you need that will be sufficient and suffice enough for you 
until the promise comes. Because even one of the things I was thinking about yesterday, it wasn't like we're dad, we're down about life in general. We are down because the promise is not here. We're feeling exhausted because the promise of God is tearing. And one of the things that I've been praying is that our hope would not be deferred. That we would not have this mindset of, oh, the last time the Lord let me down, the last time I trusted God would do such and such and such, but he didn't do it. And so now, you know, I can't trust God to do anything. I don't want that to happen to us. That is when our hope will be deferred. And our hearts will be sick, like the Bible, like the Bible says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. When our hope just keeps almost getting, like, rejected, you know? One of the things that I, I thought about today is that the only reason why faith can move mountains is because the Lord is backing our belief of faith moving the mountain. But if the Lord is not backing that belief by him moving the mountain, because it's not like I just got the ability, yeah, mountain move, it's the Lord. And so if the Lord is not backing that, then sometimes we feel like we don't have enough faith, that we're not sufficient enough, that maybe this actually is not true. Maybe I should just shut up and go back to work, go back to my nine to five and do regular, regular, regular things. Sometimes we feel that way. The other times we just don't even know what's going on. Apparently the Prince of Persia likes to play in the mountains too. <laughs> I don't have beef with him. I just don't want to be around that brother. Excuse him from all of my storyline, Lord. I don't want him in my storyline. When we get to heaven and we're talking about life, you won't hear him come out of my narrative. Shame be. Shame be. Anyways, guys, um, the Lord be with you. Be encouraged. Faith thing, my God is Haiti. Okay, guys, uh, the Lord loves you. And I believe like what the Lord has showed my family that he is going to start expressing his love for us in more than just his saying, I love you. More than him just, you know, giving us promises that these things are going to become physical, tangible things we see and experience. We are going to be witnesses of God's works, of his wonders, of his love, of his grace and his mercy. We will have a testimony as a result. You just got to believe. Faith thing, while God is high team.